Hi, everyone. Um, if you can hear me, raise your hand. Hi, everyone. I am not uh, Dr. Kuzmerchik, who was uh, supposed to introduce Dr. Porter today. I'm Deborah Levne. I was introduced before. And I, am, I had the privilege of um, engaging with Dr. Porter a few years back when she expressed her vision that uh, um, we need to create a cross-border health innovation corridor between Windsor and Detroit in order to help the innovation get from the lab to the market, from the lab to the patients. Uh, Lisa is a, a, Dr. Porter, Porter, Lisa is a brilliant academic who used her entrepreneurial spirit to advance health innovation in our region to the benefit of all. Let me tell you uh, a little bit more about Dr. Porter. She's a professor at the Department of Biomedical Science at the University of Windsor. She began in University of Windsor in 2004 after completing her postdoctoral fellowship uh, at the University of California in San Diego. Uh, Lisa is a cell molecular biologist with an interest in understanding how cells grow and divide and what can go wrong during normal process to cause disease like cancer. I was once in her lab, amazing place. Her um, cancer biology interests have expanded over the years at the University of Windsor to involve the study of breast, brain, liver, prostate, and spe uh, specific blood cancers. Lisa was one of the founding director of the Windsor Cancer Research Group, an assembly of local researcher, clinicians, doctor, community partners, with focusing on strengthening local cancer research and bridge collaboration with cancer treatment centers. And that's how she got to the cross-border idea. And this group is now part of uh, a larger effort to unify the area's health research in Windsor, Essex area. And that include the two hospitals, the college and the university. And it's called We Spark Health Institute. It was launched in 2020, just before the pandemic. Lisa is currently the executive director of We Spark. So Lisa is a visionary leader of our community, and we really would love to hear what you have to say, Lisa. Thank you, Deborah. Um, so uh, hopefully everyone can see me here. So I wanna thank uh, Yvonne and the organizers of this event uh, for giving me the opportunity to come and, and speak to everybody today. And I, of course, want to acknowledge uh, the great work being done uh, by WeTech Alliance. Um, over the years, they've really increased the opportunities and supported the successes of innovators across our region. So thanks uh, to all of you, and it's really my pleasure to be here today. Uh, so as you heard from, from Deborah, I'm a cancer researcher. Um, my passion is really about finding new and better ways to improve the journey for cancer patients across a spectrum of different uh, forms of cancer. But what I'm gonna to talk to you uh, about today is not about my research or my vision alone. It's really about uh, the product of the vision and hard work of many individuals um, from across our region, some of whom are retired now, some who continue to work with us to move health research forward in Windsor, Essex. I wanna start out um, by stressing the importance that health research brings to society, to healthcare and uh, to our economy. So um, for health research, um, many of you may know, but maybe some uh, don't really think uh, specifically about what health research brings to our society. So health research, of course, naturally uh, brings expertise around the table to meet our most pressing challenges. We're seeing that right now uh, with COVID. And in doing so, that aids in acquiring uh, cutting edge technology, but also helping us in developing new technologies and moving those forward. Health research naturally becomes a breeding ground for world-class training uh, environment. And that also uh, just sort of spills forward in our environment to really create an exciting environment that's grounded in excellence and grounded uh, in knowledge. 
And it's that kind of environment that attracts and retains the best and the brightest in healthcare to our region. That then really does support our, uh, our economy and our uh, community. It aids in bringing the latest diagnostics, treatments, and therapies to patients here in our region. And by having health research happening at our hospitals, that allows those hospitals to adopt the best prevention and care practices first. Collectively, that for patients, for students, for the community provides an environment of hope and empowerment. There is um, actual data that shows that patients treated at centers that have active health research live longer. And that stat alone is such an important uh, de deliverable to bring to our community. And it doesn't stop there. Uh, for business and the economy, we know that health research can find alternative mechanisms, say for developing um, funds, to bring funds to the table to develop new innovations. By bringing those expertise and experts around the table, that sort of naturally uh, points out and identifies uh, what the market and what customers uh, need the most. And that training environment uh, provides access to business to the most highly trained individuals, and it keeps the workforce current, which is very important. It also finds better ways for businesses to reach their market when it comes to healthcare. And of course, it naturally brings people around the table that are eager and capable uh, to advance your ideas. So health research has many deliverables to a variety of different stakeholders across our community. It goes without saying then that we need health research right here in our community. Um, at the time when we began this project back in 2009, um, there was no supported effort to truly grow health research uh, within Windsor. We were, of course, butted up against some giants uh, in the field to the north of us, Detroit, Upper Michigan, with Wayne State, uh, Henry Ford, Carmanos, Michigan State, and the University of Michigan, and then to the east of us, of course, the University of Western Ontario and the Academic Health Sciences Centers uh, in London. It uh, is probably not hard uh, to visualize what side of the, the fence we were on here in Windsor. And well, there is great advantages, of course, to bringing together our strengths. And this is our ultimate goal. Uh, Windsor Essex first had to gain its own identity and strength in the area of health research. In order to truly be a partner that could actually benefit our region, we had to step up our game and really figure out who we were and, and how we could bring together our strengths within our region in order to meet those of our partners. So this is, is where we started. Um, and we were lucky to bring together the four, now the four WeSpark organizations uh, that each bring to the table their own strengths and are guided by visionary leadership. Um, each of these individuals see the promise in our region and truly believe that we should settle for nothing short of excellence. Uh, the University of Windsor, of course, brings to the table uh, expertise for supporting research and already had world-class uh, health research that was embedded in every faculty across campus. Hotel de Grace Healthcare uh, is a community-based hospital that truly is a powerhouse for patient-centered value-based care. It uses research on a regular basis to provide care in new ways and to improve the way that they're uh, providing access to treatment and in how they're delivering that patient experience. St. Clair College, some of you may know, is home to one of the largest health sciences programs in the province and is using research regularly to provide students with work ready skills um, while foraging really the community partnerships that, uh, that, that they really uh, need for their students to go off into that workforce. And Windsor Regional Hospital, it's the 11th largest acute care hospital in the province. And it was already making strides towards becoming an academic health system that supports cutting edge research, education and care across a range of disciplines. So collectively, uh, these four institutions on their own were strong and they're continuing to grow, but coming together has amplified that potential. And we are only just beginning to see what we can accomplish as a group. 
So as Deborah mentioned, um, our journey really officially started May 1st, uh, 2019. We weren't yet branded as WeSpark. And then we were um, chartered to become an official institute under the University of Windsor later that month. We then continued over the next few months uh, to really continue to do an environmental scan consult with uh, members, which we uh, are constantly um, really appointing towards our advisory uh, committee, but really using these stakeholders and consultants in the community around and within our partnerships uh, throughout the region. We added this data to sort of a decade of data that had been accumulating and then uh, pulled together an executive committee. And this executive were uh, largely partners within our four uh, WeSpark organizations. And um, these individuals had to take off their uh, independent institution hats and really sit down and think together about what we wanted to create as a region, who we wanted to be, what are our strengths and, and where do we wanna go with this? And then in February, uh, we branded officially as WeSpark Health Institute. And then we launched, uh, as Deborah mentioned, in March. And of course, we launched right as COVID uh, was shutting the province down, essentially. And our first year uh, ended April 30th. And we put together this uh, impact report, which is available on our website for you to look in detail. I'll cover a couple points uh, with that in the next few slides. And then now we've started so that we are reporting quarterly within um, now moving forward. And our first quarter one of year two is also available on our website. So just a little bit about who uh, we spark, uh, who we are. Our mission is to enhance the health, oops, I'm sorry, the health, well-being, and care of people through transformative research and knowledge translation. And our vision is a thriving, engaged research community driving advancements in health. We have uh, five strategic priorities and we have committees that are the working piece of who we are that are structured around each of these strategic priorities. And each of these committees brings to the table our five uh, working values. And you'll notice that innovation and excellence are two of the values that we embed into everything that we do. And so a little bit about our structure. Um, we are, as I mentioned, we have an advisory committee which really did help um, sort of lead us in the beginning. Um, this advisory committee continues to pull upon experts from our surrounding partnerships uh, within the region. And we uh, really keep adding to that advisory committee and relying on them an, at an ad hoc basis. Um, I know some of them are on the line uh, now. And then we have, um, our committees, uh, which really are structured around our strategic priorities, and they are the working pieces of, of who we are. So we have our research development committee, moving forward research excellence, our nucleus committee, uh, which is our committee focused on building capacity, our governance committee, which are focused around organizational effectiveness. And then we have a knowledge translation committee and a community engagement committee. Each of these committees are chaired by a member of this executive committee. And on the executive, we have two members from each of our WeSpark uh, organizations. And they are really an approval board that approve all of the recommendations moving from our committees that then move through uh, me as the executive director to our board of trustees, which has uh, the lead and sort of the top office at each of those four partnering or each of those four organizations. And then the, the main body of uh, WeSpark, our WeSpark office, and sort of the engine of who we are, our assistant director, Karen Metcalf. And our office has uh, is, is growing readily. So we have a translational research associate, Kyle Lago, our administrative clerk, uh, Marla Rivard, our part-time communications coordinator, Kathy Monbiquet, and then newly appointed uh, part-time knowledge translation research associate, uh, Adriana Baggio, and then our newly appointed intern, uh, developing a volunteer uh, network, um, and that's uh, Ryan Palazzolo. And uh, really this, uh, our staff is uh, really the, a lot of the working body that's supporting these uh, committees. And so in the next few slides, I just wanna tell you a little bit about some of the successes and the milestones that each of these uh, committees have set up and, and give you a little bit of uh, sort of high level idea of, of what we're working on. 
And so working on research excellence, our research committee has set up some of the milestones in year one and moving forward into year two. They started out profiling and tracking successes of our core membership, um, growing our membership, which I'm gonna tell you about on the next slide, um, hosting a WeSpark grants competition, developing a central hub for research processes and, central, and system navigation, addressing a need for a regional research ethics board, and consulting and supporting we, what we call our WeSpark affiliated programs. And so a little bit about our membership, and I wanted to invite you all to look to our website and uh, invite you to join us. Um, we have really membership categories that are of interest to many different people. So we have a student membership, community membership, uh, we have uh, WeSpark ambassadors who are people that are supporting us uh, through uh, donations and um, affiliate researchers who are researchers, health researchers um, outside of those four um, primary WeSpark organizations. And then we have our core uh, members who are prim whose primary affiliation is one of our four WeSpark organizations. And that core, our core memberships really are divided up into two different pathways. Um, one are our principal core members, and these are members who hold uh, either provincial, national, or international funding or are leading um, a clinical trial. And then we have associate core members um, who really are members who are maybe new to the game in health research or research um, as a whole, but are really interested in growing themselves as health researchers. And um, just to show you a little bit uh, from year one for our core members. So we have 19 uh, principal core members in year one. We already have uh, moved one of our associate core members up to uh, a, a, a principal core member uh, more recently. But within year one, you can see that these core members brought in uh, over $6 million of external grant funding and have had a lot of um, uh, really uh, impressive successes, including running a number of clinical trials, uh, publishing uh, peer-reviewed papers, uh, leading collaborations, winning awards, etc. cetera. Um, one of the things that we do within the research committee is really think about how we can support the excellence of these core principal members and continue to grow their research programs, but also looking to our other 73 uh, associate core members who are hot upcoming uh, health researchers and what we can do to really bring them up to um, being core principal members with their own active research programs. And one of the ways that we do this is through our grants program. So um, we launched uh, three different types of grants program, a seed funding program, which is really about taking early stage ideas and providing them with some funding in order to get those ideas moving. A bridge grant funding, which is is really taking um, grants that our members have written uh, that are provincial, national, or international grants that have just fallen short of funding and give them the, the funding that they need to get those up to being uh, those large funded grant programs. And then we have an equipment and infrastructure grants funded programs. So while um, each of these funding programs need to be led by one of our core uh, WeSpark members, uh, they can, can include teams of researchers uh, that are moving them forward. You can see that in year one, we were able to support 29 grants involving uh, over 100 different researchers from over 24 or 24 different collaborating institutions and uh, equaling over $400,000. And uh, really thanks to uh, many of our generous uh, supporters that allowed that grants competition to happen. Uh, one of the competitions that we were uh, really proud of um, and supported uh, sort of the majority of our grants was uh, this COVID rapid call that we uh, launched right out of the gate. And so uh, right after we uh, launched as an institute, we are grants committee uh, worked hard to launch this, uh, our seed grant program. And then we were able to make a call for COVID grants early in April and fund 21 of those grants by the end of the month. And uh, of those 21 grants that represented 20 partnering organizations around our region and over a hundred uh, different resources, uh, researchers. Our uh, staff also launched a COVID-19 resource hub that included the resource 
courses that were being provided by our four um, WeSpark institutes, but all or institutions, but also um, many of our different partnering organizations within the community, such as the public health. And so we really uh, focused on being sort of a central hub that could bring together all of the different resources that people were uh, trying to get out there. And this is still an evolving uh, resource. So if you want to take a look at it, make use of it, and also, uh, of course, feel free to, to send us your resources or ideas uh, for that hub. Another thing that uh, we look to do, uh, similar uh, to WeTech, is uh, finding ways to mobilize ideas through different kinds of events. And example of those events is we hosted these uh, COVID conversations, which are moving forward into other kinds of health research conversations, such as cancer conversations and other types of health conversations. This was really taking research ideas and finding ways uh, to discuss those early stage ideas and and discuss them as they were moving forward. We also have a sort of a pride and joy of ours is our program that we call the Think Tanks. We offer these every second month and uh, anyone is welcome to join us. And we have one tomorrow, so it's not too late to join that one if you wanna to look to our website and uh, sign up to see what the Think Tanks are all about. Think tanks have really been pivotal in us taking ideas and moving them forward, coalescing teams around those ideas and getting actionable items, which really have helped our research, our researchers um, bring forward a lot of big successes. We also um, have prided ourselves on becoming a central hub for health research for our region. We have what we're calling the Uniting Connections Collaboration Platform. And this is in early days and it's still evolving and we're looking to researchers uh, to help us in the development of this, but it already has helped uh, bring a lot of researchers um, and collaborations forward. And so you can look to our website. This really is about um, telling us what kind of collaborations uh, you're looking to Form, uh, what kind of research tools you might need, uh, whether it be equipment, resources, etc. And so um, look on our website for this uh, collaborations platform. We also have a research registry on our website, which allows us to post uh, uh, different kinds of research studies, which are looking to accrue either members of the community or looking to uh, gain accrual from other researchers or other uh, partnering institutions. And this research registry continues to grow as well. So if you have questions, uh, please uh, con uh, contact us. We also look uh, to support other affiliated programs. And so we knew that when we started um, that, you know, we didn't want to take over other areas that were already showing um, success. And so other groups and, and, uh, re and other areas that had successes with research, uh, health research. And so what we wanted to do was really set up a platform where we could support those groups. And so one of the things, and these are just showing you different ways that we support our affiliated programs. So one is we help them uh, facilitate connections. So we make sort of our affiliated programs some priority areas for events that we're hosting. We also provide them with support in um, hosting their own events. We have been able to provide some priority funding calls to some of our affiliated programs and uh, provide our affiliated programs with website support and support for data sharing. We've also looked to our affiliated programs to ask them what they need with regards to knowledge translation. And so we're able to, to uh, really start moving forward in providing sort of novel training programs that will help their uh, programs uh, succeed. And then also asking them, you know, what kind of knowledge translation tools would they like to see developed? And we've been able to move forward uh, with developing some tools for them. We also uh, look to support them with the metrics that they need to collect to be successful. Uh, we profile their researchers on the website, help uh, to highlight their successes in our newsletters and on social media, etc. So currently we have four uh, affiliated programs, the Windsor Cancer Research Group, the Center for Human Health uh, or Human Performance and Health, the Great Lakes Cardiac uh, Rehabilitation Consortium, and the Windsor Essex uh, Compassion uh, Care Community. And so please contact us if you want to uh, discuss emerging programs, networks, and look to our website uh, if you want to learn more about these uh, amazing programs. 
So from our knowledge translation uh, committee, so of course knowledge translation is really taking the research that is currently ongoing and finding ways for us to move that knowledge forward uh, to inspire and drive change. And so um, this uh, committee has had a lot of uh, different priorities, uh, four of them I'm highlighting here. So one was to develop a student network. And so we have Ryan um, leading this uh, student network as, as an intern. Um, we are looking to, to support novel training opportunities in health research, and I'll highlight two on the next slide. We are looking to be a central resource for developing uh, a variety of different knowledge translation tools. And then we set out to uh, sort of keep our members informed. And so we launched what we call the Spark. It's a, a member's newsletter. And within our first uh, two months, Months. We'd already sent this uh, newsletter out to uh, over 400 uh, individuals uh, amongst our membership. And so within our first uh, two months, really, we uh, launched 18 different knowledge translation tools that supported many different trainees in our community. And we hosted seven different educational events. You can look to our website uh, to see this one um, brainstorming event that we hosted um, that really showed some novel ways that we could use online tools to support learning uh, amongst our members. We also have been working with our Schulich partners to provide ways to support medical student trainees within the Windsor-Essex community. And then we um, have launched a uh, Master's of Translational Health Research Program uh, through the University of Windsor, which is supporting clinical research uh, projects. And so um, both of these uh, ideas are, are continuing to evolve, um, but are be, will be ones that really are important for supporting our, our researchers. And then for community engagement, um, we have launched this Ask the Experts series and initially launched around the um, questions that the community had about COVID. Um, and we're looking to expand this Ask the Experts series into other areas of health. We also, uh, through our uh, communications person, have really been very active in um, launching our website. And so that website launched in March, and you can see um, very quickly gained a number of uh, unique website visits. Um, across uh, not just Canada, but uh, internationally. And uh, we do have uh, a very active presence on all of the social media platforms using the same handle at We Spark Health. So please um, look us up there. And we have a community um, newsletter that in the first two months went to over 800 uh, individuals. And so when you sign up to be a community member, um, you'll be delivered uh, that uh, newsletter. And then with regards to building capacity, uh, this is a, a, a group that we call uh, NUCLEUS, which stands for Network of Core Labs Enabling Solutions. And one of the things that uh, NUCLEUS does is really collect an inventory of what kind of equipment and core labs that we have locally already ongoing, and then what do we need moving forward. Um, one of the things that they've been very active in looking at is how WeSpark uh, can be a central resource uh, for, um, uh, for data sharing. And so we very quickly uh, got a license for our REDCap as a central license. And we right now are um, able to support centrally um, the IT capacity and uh, training on uh, REDCap. We also are looking to um, really uh, facilitate some large infrastructure and capital build plans uh, within our region in collaboration, of course, with our hospitals. And so just in some final, uh, just a moment uh, to call to action, I invite you to go to our website, uh, become a member. Uh, we're happy to promote your health uh, events. Please keep an eye on our successes um, and uh, feel free to brag about us on social media. Um, I'm really happy with how things are going and I, I hope that you would be impressed as well. And so in short time, WeSpark has really come together to form a one of a kind uh, unity between our university college and two primary uh, hospitals. Uh, this unity really sets us apart from others. And as many of you know on the line, Windsor-Essex has a strong sense of pride in being homegrown. Uh, this is truly a homegrown project that has vision um, and uh, is really looking for the future of, uh, our pro of our region and healthcare in our region. And so we're looking forward in year two to building upon this foundation and working with you and coming to the table as a partner to meet our uh, healthcare challenges that define us as a region. And um, our tagline for year two is achieving more together and we look forward to that. And so I know I'm uh, out of time and I don't know if we have time to answer uh, any questions.
So I see uh, in the uh, chat um, that um, somebody asked about uh, the think tank and um, they asked if there's any geographical uh, requirements um, for uh, the think tank. Oopsie. Uh, sorry about that. And um, no, there's not. So anyone is is uh, happy to join us. We're happy to um, bring to the table. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to move over this window. But please, no, join us in Think Tank. Um, we are uh, happy to have any of you. So do you envision a um, WeSpark cross-border collaboration? Uh, 100%. So WeSpark really is um, as I mentioned in the beginning, it's 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 about strengthening Windsor Essex uh, with regards to health research. But one of the major goals of that was to allow us to be a strong partner for um, our cross border partnerships and uh, all of the programs that we mentioned, and even the teams. Many of our researchers are looking. Uh, to develop teams. And so the expertise that's on the line right now, individuals uh, from around uh, the region, please, uh, we have many researchers who would be very happy to work with you uh, moving forward for sure. Eric, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, everybody. Um, really delighted uh, that I could, uh, really excited actually that I could catch the latter part of Dr. Porter's uh, presentation, which is uh, just remarkable seeing how far we spark has really come in the last uh, in the last little bit. And um, I'll be honest with you, I am convinced that Dr. Porter has uh, is cloning herself secretly in her laboratory because there's no way that one person uh, can uh, can do so much um, and, uh, and just wanted to say how commendable that is everything that you're doing both your work in your laboratory but also in terms of building a community around around we spark um, and on this side of the uh, of the border I just wanted to say hello to everyone uh, and uh, just 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 wanted to remark how absolutely remarkable it is as well how far we've come as a cross-border community working on health challenges and, and the collaboration that really is taking place. Um, if COVID has taught us anything, it's, it's that health challenges uh, really do not recognize borders. They don't respect borders. And quite frankly, neither should our solutions and the way that we, the way that we arrive at solutions to the challenges that we're facing. And so uh, really hats off to, to WeSpark, hats off uh, to, uh, to MedHealth, uh, the tremendous work that uh, that med health is doing as well to bridge to serve as bridges uh, on both sides of the border and i think what's going to be critical uh, to the work as, as we continue is to make sure that we continue bringing more partners on board and really continue bringing not just public sector uh, partners but private sector partners into this work and making sure that both the federal and provincial governments are also engaged deeply in, in the work that's happening here um, so that we can, we can uh, to use a proverbial word, to take the next step. Uh, so with that, I don't wanna uh, take away any time from the excellent discussion that's taking place, but I really just wanted to commend the organizers uh, of this day for uh, again, serving as a bridge and, uh, and the work that you're doing. So thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. And I don't know if I have time to comment, but um, I do want to say that I think one of the big things that uh, we we have recognized is um, obviously that we do have our unique challenges um, in in Windsor and Windsor Essex and how we're um, sort of communicating with our partners um, to both sides of us and across the border. And um, you know, with COVID especially, we've seen that the government has particular interest in our area because, you know, even with our unique demographics, uh, it's it's represented its own challenges. And so I think this also speaks to the importance of us really gaining momentum with regards to research. I mean, we need to have that research infrastructure in place and we need to be strong um, in order to be able to address the, the challenges that come to us. And our region is important. And I think that that's what's, um, you know, we're seeing right now, even opening the border uh, for COVID, um, you know, it, it's gonna take new solutions and uh, that requires research. And so, um, you know, this is something that right now we have a lot of researchers focusing on um, at uh, WeSpark. And uh, this is an area for sure that we're happy to, um, to work with different partners on, certainly. 
Thank you very much, um, Dr. Porter and Dr. Kuzmerchik. This was amazing. What a great combination. Thank you for having us.